The era of villains being evil for evil's sake is over. I love villains, but it's still a challenge to write them because as a writer, you can't judge them. Bad judgment will impede on your character's authenticity. You need to understand and see the world from their point of view because a villain is a hero in their own story. Hi, my name is Vivian and I'm an aspiring sci-fi and fantasy author and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about villains. By the end of this video, you will have a better idea on how to create an interesting villain. Creating a villain is like creating the protagonist, but there are some differences we will discuss today. We are going to use Oswald Cobblepot Penguin from Gotham as an example. Now let's get into the video. Without believable and interesting characters, you don't really have fiction at all. This is a quote from Nancy Cress. Her book is called Characters, Emotion, and Viewpoint. There will be details below if you're interested in getting the book. Anyways, this applies to villains as well. Like I mentioned earlier, the days of evil villains twirling their mustaches for the sake of being evil are over. Villains who twirl their mustaches are easy to spot. What is your villain's goal? Like your main character, your villain also wants something as well. They also believe that what they desire will bring them the happiness that they want. But the villain will do anything, even if it is morally gray, to get what they want. That is why most villains go through a negative character arc. There are some villains that go through a positive character arc, like Regina, the evil queen in Once Upon a Time. But after she completes her positive arc, she becomes a flat character arc through the rest of the series. What does the villain want and what do they keep chasing? Every action the villain takes is for them to achieve this goal. In the show Gotham, Oswald Cobblepot's goal is he wants purpose. Everything he does is so he can have meaning in his life, that his life is actually worth something and he wants to leave his mark on Gotham. Refer to the character's ghost. Usually, the goal the character wants to achieve is rooted in the character's past and they carry that past with them at the start of the story. The villain has to be introduced in Act 1. They have had a life before Act 1, and in Act 1, they have the desire in them that will influence their actions for the rest of the story. If you want to create more conflict in your story, you can have the villain and the hero want the same goal. Each of them believes that the goal is what they need to achieve happiness, so they will fight for it. This can also put your hero in more danger because the villain will be willing to kill the hero to get to the goal, whereas the hero would be more hesitant, which puts the villain at an advantage. The villain's ghost. How did your villain become who they are now? Know the history of your villain, their backstory. The backstory can be as long and as short as you want it to be, but it has to be information you know to build the character. No one is born evil, so including your backstory, what happened in your character's life that caused them to switch and become evil. When you're writing this, look at your villain's perspective and not judge them. From their point of view, they're not evil. For example, the villain may have lost a loved one in their past, and now they believe that no one in the world deserves to have their loved ones living. 
So the villain goes on a killing spree. To your character, this isn't evil. The villain is acting out of pain. But to the rest of the world, it is evil. Oswald Cobblepot's past is he was raised by his mother who coddled him. His mother made him believe that he was such a good boy and that he will achieve great things. But Oswald has a cold and calculating personality and there are people in Gotham who believe in order to rule the city, you got to get into the underworld of Gotham. Oswald gets introduced into the criminal world. Oswald's ambition is to control Gotham because he wants to leave a mark on the city. He then becomes an apprentice for Fish Mooney, who teaches him the ropes of organized crime. If you're getting value from this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. How do you create your villains? What are your processes in building a respectable villain? Give your villain a strength. Villains aren't defined by their flaws. They have strengths and skills that need to be known. What is your villain good at? Usually, this strength is what the villain will use to go up against your hero and frustrate your hero. Throughout most of the story, the villain will seem to have the upper hand because their strength will be what they use to go against the hero. It will make the hero's journey more difficult. Your hero has to feel small compared to the villain, especially in act two of the story. In the show Gotham, Oswald Cobblepot's strength is that he can manipulate a situation for his personal gain. He is a survivor if it means working with the hero Jim Gordon or his competition the Riddler, he will do it because it's a means to an end. Make your villain terrifying. What I mean by make your villain terrifying, I don't mean scary. Have your villain frustrate your hero so much that the hero becomes crippled with self-doubt and, and is afraid to keep going. Let your villain win battles and have the villain put your hero in impossible situations. That your readers believe the villain will prevail and defeat your hero. Make your villain cross the line. Have them do things or push boundaries that your hero wouldn't cross. For example, in Gotham, Penguin meets his dad and his dad's family. He loves his dad very much and they bond. The father wants him to be included in the family. When his stepmom kills the dad, the family becomes cruel to Oswald. Penguin then kills his step-siblings and tricks the mom into eating them. Then he kills her too. Now his father's house and fortune are his. This moment in his character development makes Penguin more terrifying because he will push to the edge to attain his goal which is purpose and power. When you make your villains terrifying and hard to beat, you would have created a respectable villain who is a match for your hero. Humanize your villain. Yes, a villain will do anything to get what they want and push to great limits, but even villains have lines they won't cross. These are boundaries that they set for themselves, not what society or people set for them. Is there anything your villain cares about that he or she won't compromise? It may be family or even animals. When you draw the line with your villain, it can stir up some empathy into your readers. Show your readers that your villain isn't completely heartless that the villain has some sense of humanity. In the show Gotham, Oswald Cobblepot doesn't harm children. In fact, outside of his home, 
there was a kid he saw being picked on by other classmates and he would study the boy from time to time. Penguin saw a lot of himself in the boy and decides to mentor him. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. I also have free character worksheets and other, re and other resources. The details will be in the description box below. Go ahead and click on the next video here. I'll see you next time. Have a great rest of your week.